All right. I'm back. It's been a while. Um, where do we even start, right? I mean, it's just been so long uh, since I did the last live stream. I guess I should explain why I haven't done a live stream for so long, which is basically, I think I did the last one right before a show break. And then a million things happened at once. We hired a new full-time person. We launched on a new platform. We've been doing a million things and it's just been insane. I mean, it's been so busy and we are doing so many different things, some, some of which I'll tell you about, that I have uh, not been streaming. And I apologize for that. I hope to get back to it. Uh, people email almost daily saying, when are we going to get back to the live streams? And the answer is uh, right now. The answer is right now, and I will be talking about the Robert Mueller subpoena of Trump Russia organization documents. I will be taking questions. We'll be doing super chats. I mean, I got to catch up on everything, right? So we're going to be talking about a lot of different things. Hi to everybody in the chat. People already talking about the new David Pakman show coffee mugs, which are going over pretty damn well, I must say. Um, so we're going to get to a lot of different things, couple different things. One thing that I think you will like is that I have now set up a way where, um, you will be able to, for example, in reviewing the Robert Mueller article, I will be able to, uh, you'll be able to see me and I'll be able to show you the article. That's one possibility. I've also set it up if that gets a little bit laggy, um, with just the article and not me. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, maybe people will like that. That's that's something new, and we we will get to this article, uh, and I can be down in the corner as well. But when I am in this mode, you will not be able to see all of the great different um, animations that will play when different things happen. So when somebody uh, makes a pledge on Patreon, we are supposed to be able to see. Are we going to be able to do it? Let's see if uh, we can, if I can show you what that looks like. And I think this is all finally working as well. I'm actually very excited about this because a lot of this stuff was not working well before in the old days. When somebody becomes a patron, there's supposed to be, there it is, little animation and noise. When someone sends a super chat, we're supposed to see that. When someone makes a donation on Streamlabs, we're supposed to see that. And the new thing is, and, and I've talked about this only after the last live stream, we are now part of the YouTube sponsorship beta, which means that we are actually, you can sponsor our YouTube channel directly for $4.99 a month. And those are also supposed to come up. There is a test of that. So hopefully all that stuff will be working because uh, when it doesn't, it's frustrating and nobody's pleased, nobody's happy. So uh, hopefully all, all of that different stuff is going to be working. Uh, let's. Why don't we just get right into some of the normal uh, YouTube live provisions and uh, then we will just jump into the content. So yeah, these are really live. I haven't done it in a while. Used to do it a lot. It's live so you can actually talk to me, ask questions, etc. Best ways to do that, super chat and streamlabs.com slash the David Pakman show. If you ask a question or send a comment via Streamlabs or Super Chat, Super Chat is the dollar sign at the bottom of the chat window. I will answer it, address it during the live stream. Very, very exciting. People are talking, people love it. Uh, number three, new members and patrons who sign up during the show will get shout outs and thank yous. We are accepting cryptocurrency now at davidpakman.com slash cryptocurrency and please don't troll the live chat. Um, we have we still have moderators who have been fully deputized to ban, block, and time people out who are doing uh, annoying stuff in the live chat. Just don't do it, right? We're all here to have a good time. It's not funny and it's not fun when people um, troll the live chat, all right? Uh, let's get right into the news, which is indeed that uh, Robert Mueller has subpoenaed Trump uh, Russia documents, Trump Organization documents in the Russia investigation. And I actually don't think, a few people emailed me saying, David, you're now vindicated. I'll try, I'll try putting myself on camera while we look at this as well. If it gets too laggy, I'll, I'll get rid of it. Uh, I've gotten emails from people saying, David, you're vindicated because you said earlier this week when Trump fired uh, Rex Tillerson and when, uh, <laughs> I've already forgotten which scandals took place, when Trump did there was something else, I said something big must be coming from Mueller. 
and this is part of the preemptive um, uh, distraction campaign. I actually don't know that this is it. Some people wrote to me saying, David, you're vindicated. Look at what happened. I actually don't know that this is it. This is big. But this didn't just happen. Like it, this, supposedly, these documents were actually subpoenaed um, from the Trump Organization some time ago. We're just learning about it now. And that's the big picture, that special counsel Robert Mueller has subpoenaed Trump org documents, including documents related to Russia. The sources for the New York Times, which has been doing really pretty good reporting on this stuff, um, uh, quote to or, or name two people briefed on the matter as the source. Uh, this is, as the New York Times says, the first known instance of Robert Mueller demanding records directly related to Trump's businesses. We've been speculating all along, and it's also been uh, sort of part of the speculation because of who Mueller has been hiring, uh, lawyers who are experts in financial crimes, that eventually this was going to get to what, you know, what specifically we don't know, money laundering or foreign money, um, the hush money paid to Stormy Daniels might be part of it, but we knew that finances were likely going to be a part of it. Um, and this is the first known instance where Trump business documents are being requested. We don't know the breadth of the subpoena, nor is it clear why Mueller issued it instead of simply asking for the documents from the company. That's a very interesting thing because if there was... Why would you subpoena it if you believe that you could just get it by asking, right? So the fact that there was a subpoena suggests either that Mueller had reason to believe the Trump Organization was not going to turn the documents over, or they had already asked for them and the Trump Organization refused to turn them over. Uh, as it says here, the subpoena was delivered in recent weeks. That's relevant because it suggests either that this isn't whatever Trump was trying to distract from by firing Tillerson. It suggests potentially that the Tillerson firing was not an act of preemptive distraction. Um, or it suggests that if it is, Trump got a heads up that this was going to leak uh, around the time that it did, which is now. Uh, once again, the timing of this, this is a relevant statement. The subpoena is the latest investigation that, um, the, this is the latest indication that the investigation is not ending anytime soon. You'll remember, you probably remember that Donald Trump said, uh, before the new year, this is going to be over, uh, by Thanksgiving, it's going to be over by Christmas, it's going to be over by the New Year. It's now March 15th. We're halfway through March. We're about a quarter of the way into 2018. And if only now we are getting to these requests, it's not going to end anytime soon, okay? And that, I think, is something that we should all be paying very close attention to because, if anything, the indication is that the investigation is broadening, not becoming more narrow. New York Times speculating that the role that foreign money may have played in funding Trump's political activities uh, are going to be explored here. Um, and we see here in recent weeks that Mueller's investigators have questioned witnesses, including an advisor to the UAE, about the flow of Emirati money to the United States. That is also particularly interesting to me because you might remember that, or if you haven't seen my clip today about Jared Kushner, um, Jared Kushner was involved in pushing Trump to support a blockade, a financial blockade of Qatar. And there was speculation that it might be related to the Qatari, uh, a group of Qatari investors opting not to um, get involved in financing 666 Fifth Avenue, a Jared Kushner owned building in Manhattan. We also know that that might have actually been related merely to Emirati influence on Jared Kushner. So there is a theme here. When you mention the United Arab Emirates, it is not only looking at the possible flow of money from the Emirates to the Trump campaign. We also know that Jared Kushner has been potentially heavily influenced by the United Arab Emirates. Um, let's see what else we have here. We have a quote from Alan Futterfoss, who's the lawyer representing the Trump Organization, saying, since July of 2017, we have advised the public that the Trump Organization is fully cooperative with all, with all investigations, including the special counsel, and is responding to their requests. The language there is notable, right? Because as I mentioned, you don't necessarily subpoena documents if you're Robert Mueller, if you think you will get them merely by asking. And saying that they are cooperating and responding to requests doesn't mean that they are fulfilling the requests as asked. I think that that is an important thing. 
uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders reiterating that the president is cooperating, cooperating with the inquiry. Not really meaningful. Trump organization has said they never had real estate holdings in Russia, but witnesses recently interviewed by Mueller have been asked about a possible deal in Moscow. In 2015, a longtime business associate of Trump's emailed uh, Michael Cohen at his Trump organization account claiming he was tied to Putin and that building Trump Tower Moscow would help Trump's presidential campaign. Yeah, no, no real surprises there. Um, we've heard that type of thing before, and we'll see what role, what we ultimately learn about that um, in the investigation. Uh, project didn't ultimately happen, but Trump did sign a non-binding letter of intent on that. Um, this is a very important paragraph right here that I want to talk about. And what the New York Times article says is that Mueller could run afoul of a line that the president has warned him not to cross, although it's not clear how much of the subpoena is related to Trump's business beyond ties to Russia. You'll remember, and this is the key thing, in an interview with Maggie Haberman from the New York Times, who, who co-authored this article, um, and another one, and by the way, thank you to, ooh, we just missed, there was a, uh, there was a donation there that came in uh, from Perry Chell, which we will, we will get to that. We will get to all of those. Keep those coming by all means. Donald Trump was asked by Maggie Haberman and, and another New York Times reporter some months ago in July, would it be crossing a red line if, if Mueller started looking into your personal finances, your family's finances? And Trump said he believed it would. So there is already rampant speculation that this subpoena might trigger Donald Trump into firing Robert Mueller. And you know, I, I wish I could tell you, listen, Trump knows he can't fire Mueller. It would just be politically untenable, or uh, uh, Trump um, uh, has the audacity maybe to fire Mueller. I really can't. I really can't. I don't know where Donald Trump's head is on that. Um, and at this point, I, I really can't say. I think it is within the realm of possibility that um, uh, Donald Trump would fire Mueller still at this time. We will have to wait and see, and whether this will sort of create a pretext for that I don't really know. I don't really know, but I am very, very interested uh, in seeing. Let's get to some of the super chats and questions that have been coming in. Uh, Ryan Couture has sent a $2 super chat asking when we take calls on Wednesday. Uh, typically 1.15 p.m. Eastern. Okay, typically 1.15 p.m. Eastern is when we take live calls on Wednesday. We do get the interest level in the live calls has been uh, completely off the charts. So I apologize in advance that we can't get to every call. We take somewhere between six and 12 calls typically, and we usually receive in the neighborhood of 40 or so. So we just, we literally, unless we do the whole show as calls, which I know people generally don't want, um, we, we can't get to everybody. Um, so I apologize in advance for that, Ryan, but 1.15 p.m. Eastern, and the number is uh, 617-830. 4750. You can also leave a voicemail at 2192 David P. That's another option. Uh, Perry Chell has left a 10 British pound super chat uh, or Streamlabs contribution. No, super chat, yes. Uh, thank you very much. No question or comment. And Sarah Dobson has left a British pound 99 super chat asking, What's the hardest part about making the show? You know, the hardest part is just that we're a small organization. And everybody's doing uh, 10 things. Everybody's doing 10 things. So every single day, we're dealing with advertisers, we're dealing with guests, we're dealing with production, we're dealing with research, we're dealing with booking guests uh, from both the uh, interview prep and logistical side. I'm running the business aspects of the show. We've got you know producer Pat, who's interfacing with the guests and preparing every single day for all the stuff that's up on the screen. And uh, we've got producer Noah, who's dealing with advertisers and producing long form pieces in the Critical Thinking miniseries. And as soon as it's over, we're basically starting the entire thing over again. And that actually relates to uh, the degree to which everybody is doing many things relates to what hopefully will be a very exciting upcoming announcement. Um, on the program. And uh, we have, uh, as, as many of you know, there have been, 2017 was a crazy year. Things stabilized a little bit in uh, 2018. Part of it has been 
Uh, well, part of it has been because of Patreon, right? So Patreon has been a really, really big thing there. Uh, that That's a place where we have over 2,000 patrons currently. That's led to a lot of um, uh, exciting projects, the critical thinking miniseries, for example. And I'll have some announcements soon to actually to make about the uh, production of the program. Uh, let's get to, I wonder if I can even show you the super chats as they come in here. Uh, yeah, well, that's not, that's not the best. I'm not, I'm not loving the way that's looking. Uh, next super chat is from Clarth1234, has, who sent two Australian dollars asking, have I ever been offered a job on a news network? No, I haven't. Um, I don't know that I'm just, the, I, I don't know that I'm the right guy for like, uh, corporate media. And two years ago, if you had asked me what's like my dream end game for the show, um, I would have said something like, getting hired by corporate media. And over the last two years, things have changed so drastically on the program. The David Pakman show has grown so much. And in talking to my friends and, and more colleagues than, than close friends who are contributors on corporate media or are hosts on corporate media, I don't know that it's for me. I don't, th I mean, that's definitely no longer the dream. The dream is actually just to cre keep growing the David Pakman show. And I've sort of renewed my commitment to it because um, the oversight, the editorial oversight and people uh, telling you what is okay and what's not okay and getting notes from management, I will deal with the hate mail from the audience because ultimately I decide what goes on the show and what doesn't go on the show. And that is a level of control that I just w could never have, could never have on corporate media. And so it's really not the goal anymore. It was the goal at one point and uh, it's not anymore. So I've not been offered a job on a news network and at this point, my, my focus really is on growing independent media, maintaining total control over the show. Nobody can tell me what stories to do, what stories not to do. We have total control over our agreements with advertisers, which I don't even work on anymore. That's another thing that, that we're doing that I think is great, which is that now that we have someone in producer Noah Ferguson who's working with our advertisers, I effectively do not speak to our advertisers um, with rare occasions where they might have some kind of uh, question that I get pulled in on answering. I don't negotiate with the advertisers. I don't, uh, I, I basically, we basically have separation and I think that's a really good thing. Usually at organizations as small as we are, I'd be doing everything and I would be directly involved in that. And um, uh, there we, we, have set up, we've been lucky enough to be able to set up a system where that's not the case. So that's, that's a really good thing. Uh, Ronald Finkley has sent a $2 super chat with no question or comment. Very, very much appreciate that as well. Um, and also over on streamlabs.com slash the David Pakman show, David's mom has sent a $3 and 90 cent Streamlabs contribution saying, hi, honey, would love to see you engage in more debates. You're extremely talented at debating and should utilize this skill more. Two reasons I can tell you that's not my mom. Number one, my mom speaks to me in Spanish. And number two, my mom, when she speaks English, when she writes English, she doesn't use British spellings. So in case anybody thought that was my mom, it's not. Uh, Jane A. has sent a $4.99 super chat asking, if Mueller finds dirt now, will they move to impeach? What should we expect? I think that there is not going to be impeachment of Donald Trump. Um, I think that even if Robert Mueller finds dirt at this point, you will more likely see, uh, particularly with Republicans controlling the House and Senate, you are more likely to see charges filed against Trump, which is legally a question mark still, and a sort of constitutional crisis as to the constitutionality of uh, charging a sitting president. Uh, I think that that is the more likely scenario. I just don't think you're gonna see the current status quo of Republican controlled House and Senate do that. 2018 election though, and uh, yet another reason why it is super, super important for everybody to vote. And I've been talking about that. I'm worried, I am genuinely worried about low voter turnout uh, in the 2018 midterms, even though we've had a great growth in activism uh, from uh, as a result of Donald Trump's presidency. I, I'm worried that it's going to be another pathetic turnout by the left at, but not that the right's turnout is anything to uh, write home about, but I care about turnout from the left and uh, that it might not go that well. So I'm worried about that. Grover Capriles 
has sent a $5 super chat asking, do you think that it's possible to implement Bernie's ideas in South America? David, don't give up. I was inspired to run for president in a South American country. All right, Grover, geez, I don't know exactly what Grover's talking about, but it's a very, very interesting question. You know, South America's politics are interesting. They are uh, very, very different than um, North American politics. I'm from Argentina, as many of you know, and I follow Argentinian politics pretty closely, although, uh, and Venezuelan politics, but beyond that, I'm certainly no Latin American political expert. Colombian uh, politics maybe would be, would be third after that. Um, I think that the people of South America are already much more open to the ideas of social democracy of someone like Bernie Sanders. The problem that South America has is that there are a lot of people whose rhetoric, a lot of elected officials and uh, candidates in South America, Latin America, whose rhetoric is very left populist sounding, sort of like Bernie, but in implementation, they are authoritarian, total authoritarian, totally authoritarian. What we've seen in Venezuela with uh, Hugo Chavez followed by Nicolas Maduro is an example of that. I know there's a sort of Leninist string of the left that is not, that's not my thing. I want nothing to do with that. Um, but there is this Leninist string on the left that um, tries to paint Venezuelan leadership, both Chavez and Maduro, as this just sort of bastion of true leftism. And it's, it's an authoritarian implementation of populist rhetoric, and I, I've been pretty clear about that um, all along, and my, my views on that are, are, they are what they are. Not everybody likes them. Uh, now we have an attempt at really mimicking my mom through a Streamlabs contribution. A user going by La Mama de David, or David's mom, has made a $3.90 contribution saying, Hola hijo, ¿por qué no haces más debates? Tienes mucho talento para hacer debates. La familia está orgullosa de ti. I can tell you this is also not my mom because my mom would write to me in uh, Argentinian Spanish. She would say, Tienes mucho talento rather than Tienes mucho talento. So sadly, foiled again. Foiled again. That is definitely not my mom um, in any way, shape, or form. Okay, let me catch you up on a couple things that are going on and let's see if I can actually pull these up. Um, and show you what is going on here. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the critical thinking mini series. So let me see if I can pull that up and we can actually look at it together. I really like that now I'm able to share my browser during these things. So the, the critical thinking mini series that is funded by the uh, Patreon contributors that we garnered, I think it was a month and a half ago or something like that. That is now um, that is now up. The first half of it roughly is up. Now there's a very, very cool thing, which is that for patrons, rather than having to wait for each individual clip to publish, yeah. they have the first half of it already up. And as you can see here, it was pre-released for patrons and part two will be released soon. So this is a good reason to either become a patron or a member, because both patrons and members were given access to that first entire half of the Critical Thinking miniseries up front. That is a really, really great thing, and we've all been working on that as a team, and it's extraordinary. And you can get instant access to that, that long-form video uh, by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash David Pakman show. You can also become a member at David Pakman.com slash membership. I voted 17 has ended. Okay. So I voted 17 was a long time 2017 coupon code for membership. It's over. Um, and now the new coupon code, if you want to save 40% is vote soon 18. Okay. So you can use that coupon code, sign up for a membership at David Pakman.com slash membership and you will get access to that uh, long form critical thinking mini series. We're also doing free bumper stickers, okay? So right now, anybody who signs up for a yearly membership on our website, and to do that, you gotta switch over to yearly, right? People some, sometimes confused about this, not monthly. Yearly membership, pick the yearly membership of your choice. When you hit the sign up button, you will be uh, taken to this second screen. And if you enter the coupon code vote soon 18, when you hit the sign up button and go to the next page, your membership will be discounted 40%. And uh, when that happens, you still can qualify for 
the free bumper sticker. And all you need to do to get that is email me. Respond to your new member email. Say, David, I want the black bumper sticker. David, I want the white bumper sticker. Here's my address. And uh, it's a beautiful thing. And people placing bumper stickers all over the country over InfoWars Alex Jones bumper stickers. People uh, doing very, very creative and great things. And on that note, I want to thank James Ulrich. James Ulrich has signed up for membership just while we've been chatting here. And I really appreciate that. Really appreciate everybody who has signed up. And, and as many of you know, listen, I don't need to repeat it. Uh, 2017 was tough. 2017 was very, very tough. And uh, we have started to, started to uh, recover. Uh, Nameless King has made a $5 Streamlabs contribution saying, Hey David, how come you never covered the 300,000 jobs created last month that Trump bragged about? Is the Republican tax cut responsible for the massive amount of jobs created? Love your show. I thought we did. I mean, we, we cover that pretty regularly. regularly. If we didn't cover that, uh, my guess is that it's because of the timing. We had a couple days off in February. Uh, but I, I typically cover that and we go, you know, job creation is not linked to any one um, piece of economic policy. And uh, to the extent that Donald Trump uh, does economic policy, um, we will address how that relates to job creation. But certainly if the implication is, and I'm not saying that it is, if the implication is that I won't cover economic news under Trump when it's good, by no means. I've talked about the, the stock market that has run up. I've talked about who that's good for and who that's not good for. Um, it's not good for everybody, for sure. And, uh, you know, I covered good and bad economic news under President Obama. And that's uh, that's what we do on the show. There's no... I don't know if there was anything else sort of implicit in that question. Um, okay, I want to tell you about an upcoming interview that I think you're gonna really like. And the reason that I think you're gonna really like it is it's actually already been filmed and it is with an exorcist, okay? We are going to be running this interview next week. I interviewed a woman who claims to be a real exorcist. And that, when I say a real exorcist, I don't mean that I believe in exorcism. What I mean is that they claim to be a real exorcist. And I don't even want to say too much about it, but I think you're going to really like it. It's, uh, it's going to be a doozy, that's for sure. Um, okay, Jerry Hickel has sent a $5 super chat saying, Keep it up, David. The show keeps getting better. Well, thank you, Jerry. I really appreciate that very, very much. Uh, Sharaka Berry has sent a $5 super chat. Will you debate Kyle Kalinske over Russia, like on a plane while we are flying over Russia? I'd be willing to do that. Not, I wouldn't fly Aeroflot, but I'd be willing to debate Kyle Kalinske while flying over Russia. Have you talked to Kyle about his opinion? No, uh, Kyle and I, here's what I think sometimes people don't get and why should you, right? So I'm gonna t tell you sort of about how this works. Almost everybody I talk to on a semi-regular basis uh, who have, has a show, Sam Cedar, uh, Farron, and the behind-the-scenes people at Ring of Fire, uh, Kyle Kalinske from Secular Talk, not so much Dave Rubin anymore, as many of you know, but we used to talk. Um, who else? Uh, Jen Briney. Talk to Jenk and Steve and Aaron from the Young Turks at least once or twice a year. We do not talk about politics. We, I think for all of us, we basically get enough politics doing the shows. And so we talk about how is demonetization hitting you? How is uh, how's membership? What's going on on Patreon? Oh, did I? I think I just did something very weird with my hair there. I'm growing it out, by the way, but more on that later. We, we basically don't talk about politics. So I know that Kyle is somewhat skeptical on the Russia issue. At this point, you know, I, I, here's my thing. I don't know what there is to debate. Like we can debate, basically, there, there are things we know and there are things we don't yet know and we will not know until the investigation, Robert Mueller's investigation gets closer to or finishes and we see what charges are filed. So there's really nothing to debate about the evidence because it's limited right now because it's an ongoing investigation and circumstantially there's stuff going on. So really it would be a debate over our opinions as to how important the issue of Russia is and how much different 
parties should focus on it. So it, it doesn't strike me like it would be an interesting debate. I know a lot of people say, David, debate Kyle about Russia. Um, I think it would be pretty boring because I would agree with him that I think that Democrats need a platform and they need to get out the vote and they need to run progressive candidates where those can win. They need to run more moderate Democratic candidates when there's an opportunity to use that to win a Republican seat. I think generally we would agree that re Democrats aren't going to win elections on the Russia issue. And we should, I, I assume he agrees with letting the investigation run its course. So I don't think it would be as interesting as people think it would be. Uh, yeah, that's kind of my thought about that. Real Life Jolie has sent a $5 uh, super chat. Hey, David, I'm wondering if you recognize the name in the username I have, and if so, if you've read that book in your original language or in French. No, I actually don't. Um, uh, so it, I'm guessing it's a Spanish book with a character named Jolie. What is that? Um... I'm not even finding anything. I don't know where that's from. Are they referring to the, the author Mar Martin Jolie? Uh, or maybe it's a French book that I might have read in Spanish. I don't even know. Is it Maurice Jolie who wrote... Uh, oh, Maurice Jolie, a French publicist and lawyer known for his political satire titled um, uh, Dialogue Between Machiavelli and Montesquieu or The Politic of Machiavelli. No, I have not read it. I have not read it. I've not read really any, any, uh, I've not read it. I don't know what else I can say. I've not, uh, not, not something I'm familiar with. Um, and Sharaka Berry following up with a $2 super chat. Thank you for pronouncing my name correctly. You know, sometimes people say to me that they're surprised I pronounced the name correctly. It happens with guests a lot. And I'll look at the name and I'll say, I don't know how anyone could pronounce it a different way. Like, I mean, certainly Barry, I'm familiar with. I, I can't imagine how else that would be pronounced. And even Sharaka, like when I look at it, it just, it doesn't look like Sharaka. It doesn't look like Sharaka. I, I just don't even know how someone else uh, would, would pronounce that. Um, but my pleasure, my pleasure. Um, okay, let's see. Let's go through. I don't. I want to do this thing where I go through the regular chat window. Let's see if I can even put it up on the screen. Um, we will go. Let's see if I can move. I'll move over here. And how can I do this? Let me figure out the best way to do this. Uh, so, I could, so people can see what I'm looking at. I I don't want to just do super chat. Okay, I think this is this is as good as anything else. Uh, here we go. Okay, let's see what else is here. Is David on Joe Rogan's? Okay, where where is David's Jew gold? So that could could possibly be uh, be a, worthy of a ban. Mar uh, uh, Mario asking. Oh, and it looks like that person immediately got, got banned by Daniel Smeltzer. Nice one, Daniel. Very very nice. Mario asking. Uh, Ar Argentina va a ir al mundial. Asking whether Argentina is going to uh, the World Cup. Yes, Argentina is going to the World Cup, and I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, is David a Jew? Yes, David is a Jew. Edwin Beltran asking, is David on Joe Rogan's radar? I am. I know for a fact now that I am on the radar of Joe Rogan's producer because we exchanged emails, and I think that he kind of blew me off. He said something along the lines of, I will let Joe know that we have made contact, <laughs> which is very, very different than I'm sure Joe's going to be interested in talking to you. But I, I would love to be on the Joe Rogan program, not as some people suggest that I do to go and set him straight or anything like that. I think that there's a conversation I would like to have with him um, about misconceptions about the left um, and about progressivism and social justice warriors and issues of free speech. I'd be super interested in being on Joe Rogan's program. Um, I, I, you know, I would say tweet to him and tell him to have me on, but I've heard that he doesn't really like that. So I don't know. I mean, if somebody can help me get on, then by all means, help me get on. But I, I don't know what the method would be. Let's see what else we've got here. Uh, Jason Fister saying David is very manly. All right. Uh, very good. Um, what else do we have here? Debate Sean Hannity, debate Kyle Kalinske. David gets five o'clock shadow by 1 p.m. because he's so manly. The very, very, very true, and that's a good one. Um, Mr. T800, I'm not currently able to send super chats. If someone wants to donate and ask my question, 
A while ago, you talked about doing investigative journalism. Is that still on your roadmap? Yeah, I mean, we've been doing investigative long form pieces, which I know is not the same as going out and doing investigative pieces. We're hope hopefully working out up to that, all right? Hopefully working up to that. Um, Anthony Hamlin saying, get a Jufro like me. Yeah, I've, I've sort of decided that I'm gonna grow out my hair. And I think the idea will be just to keep getting like a longer and longer version of this and then like kind of trim it down around the edges and keep it going and we'll see what it looks like. I've never had long hair and I think it's uh, time to do it. Why not, right? Uh, let's see what else we've got here. No more Dave Rubin, why? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't really know the, the full scope of this. I've mentioned, I think I might have had a falling out with Dave Rubin. Um, after the interview I did where I asked him what I thought were reasonably tough and totally fair questions. I don't know that he liked how I handled that interview. And um, I, we haven't spoken much. We, had, we exchanged one set of text messages about Roger Veer, who we both interviewed, the Bitcoin cash guy. And I don't know if, if Ruben is upset with me or not. I'm not, I'm not really sure. Um, I saw your debate with Destiny. He got destroyed. Well done. I never did a debate with Destiny. I had Destiny on and we talked about issues on the left and right, but I, I certainly didn't debate him, never mind destroy him. So maybe maybe you're thinking of something else there. Uh, what other comments do we have here? Uh, do I have to be a member to donate? Asks Moro. No, you can use the dollar sign at the bottom of the chat window. You can go to streamlabs.com slash the David Pakman show. Both of those work. You do not have to be a member to donate. Um, a couple other super chats coming in. Um, Jerry Hickel says, you got my last name wrong. It's Jerry Hike. Oh, Jerry Heichel. Jerry Heichel, not Jerry Hickel. I stand corrected. And uh, I apologize. I do apologize. And I do want to thank um, Austin Allen. Austin Allen has signed up for membership using the coupon code VOTESOON18. And as I mentioned, we've got a coupon code which is available to anybody who wants it. You simply go to davidpackman.com slash membership. When you get to davidpackman.com slash membership, I should really zoom this out so people can see it a little bit better. Uh, yeah, there we go. When you go to davidpackman.com slash membership, you got to switch to yearly, okay, if you want a free bumper sticker. Once you do that, you hit the red sign up button. I don't know why everything is jittering like that. Maybe I should not be zooming it in. You hit the red sign up button. On the second page of the sign up, you type in the coupon code VOTESOON18, which of course I am uh, blocking because of where, there we go. And uh, once you type in vote soon 18 and hit sign up, your any membership will get discounted to uh, only uh, to a 40% discount. After you do that, simply write to me and say, hey, David, I want to claim my free uh, bumper sticker. Send me your address. I will get you a free David Pakman Show bumper sticker. And Jerry following up with just one more uh, super chat today. Jerry Heichel, no apologies needed. Everyone gets it wrong. Well, thanks. I, I appreciate that you're not mad. Matthew Campos sent a $5 super chat asking, what do you think of Messi and Dybala not being able to play together on the national team? Thoughts on President Macri visiting Russia during the World Cup? Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> Argentina just regularly has problems with their um, national team, their, their uh, World Cup team lineup. And it's pretty damn depressing, and I'm trying not to even think about it too much. I think it's fine for the president of Argentina to go to Russia during the World Cup. I don't love Messi's cozy relationship with Russia bigger picture, right? World Cup or not, I'm kind of less concerned with. Dan Yo has sent a $5 super chat. What are your thoughts on the crooked media guys? Will partisan media... Will partisan media where outlets are overtly supporting candidates become more common? I have no clue what crooked media is. I don't know what crooked media is. Let's uh, let's check it out, why don't we? Crooked media home. What do we have here? Trump's message of hope and inclusion. What the hell is this? Uh, sign up, taking the gavel from Paul Ryan's hand. I have no clue what this is. I just don't know what this is. Let's look at their team. Who is part of their team? A sane conversation about politics. Twitter is a great place to slowly lose your mind. A no bullshit conversation about politics. 
John Favreau was Obama's head speechwriter. John Lovett is a straight shooter, speechwriter for Hillary. All right, so this is like a left-wing thing. Tommy Vidor worked for Obama. Dan Pfeiffer, that's an Obama guy. Anna Marie Cox, I know she's left-wing. DeRay McKesson, not sure who that is. Ira Madison III, Jason Kander. Listen, I don't know anything about this, but um, I don't really have a problem with media openly supporting candidates. We just want to make sure we know what we're dealing with. We want to be able to distinguish between uh, news and opinion programming, sort of period, right? I mean, that, that, that's what I care about. I have no problem with partisan media. What I do have a problem with is, is propaganda and deliberate fake news. That's what I think is really destructive. Mario Quijano has sent a $5 super chat, which I really very much appreciate. No question or comment. Uh, but I really do appreciate that. Thank you very much. That is really, really important, really great to, to do the support, uh, to see the support when we do the live streams. And I'm going to try to recommit to, to the live streams. I genuinely apologize that I've not had the time to do them. Um, and particularly now that we do have YouTube sponsorship. So for I know there are people who still have never seen this. And the reason is... Um, it's a beta thing that YouTube is uh, testing out. So, for example, like when I look, I always see it. It's this sponsor button. And for the most part, it also shows up when you look at an individual video. So like if I open up this video, you let's make sure it's muted. Uh, I always see the sponsor button. And what that allows you to do is for $4.99 a month, you get extra content, early release content. And something that's very cool is that our sponsors also, when they participate in the chat, they have an official David Pakman sponsor logo that appears. So they are uh, distinguished in a way when they participate in live stream chat. So that is an extra thing, an extra reason for people uh, to sign up for the YouTube sponsorship. And, you know, I think YouTube is kind of testing it. And if it doesn't do well, they may do away with sponsorship altogether. My goal would be to try to get 1% um, of our YouTube audience to become sponsors, right? So we've got about 450,000 subscribers. If we could get 1%, that'd be 4,500 sponsors. Even half of 1%, 2,250 sponsors at 4.99 a month, uh, the majority of which goes to us, that is a really big deal. So check that out. Um, Troy McEnroy has sent a five Canadian dollar super chat asking, have you seen the underscore Donald subreddit? If so, should it be removed? I've seen it. I will often check the Donald subreddit when I want to see what is the committed Trumpist's response to something in the news. I will go and look at the Donald subreddit sometimes. And I, I don't know whether it should be removed. I mean, I'm pretty uh, wide open on free speech. I think short of inciting violence, we should allow content to stay. The problem is that you can make the case that the Donald subreddit incites violence. And on that basis, I think it would be legitimate for Reddit to shut it down. It would also be legitimate for Reddit to shut it down on the basis of it just violates our policy on hateful content, but that does open up sort of a possible Pandora's box. Eric Quinones has sent a $2 super chat saying simply great job. Well, thanks, Eric. Appreciate that. Appreciate the support. And that's going to do it for me today. I got to sort of work back up to the live streams because it, uh, it requires stamina. And I want to thank everybody who joined me. And I'm going to try to get back to it and, and uh, do more live streams. Uh, and before I go, I do want to get to Bobby Fox's 10 British pound super chat who said, does it worry you that people live in their own political bubbles with recommended features and news services? The right has done this for years, but the left is falling into the trappings of it. I have been talking about this for a while. This is the problem of filter bubbles, filter bubbles and really finely tuned social media algorithms make it super easy and convenient never to see dissenting or alternative views. And I do worry about it. It's a disaster. And we've got to do what we can to get people to break, break through and out of those. And a lot of that means telling people, I understand that your views lend themselves to these media outlets. Would you be willing to check out what this show or this outlet said? And I don't know of any way to do it on a mass scale. 
I, I really don't, Bobby. So I'm very concerned about it and depressed about it. All right, I will talk to you soon. Thanks, uh, thanks for watching my first live stream in a while.